welcome to NEET then, a comprehensive biology preparation for NEET. We will start with class 11th biology, CBSC, NCRT. So in class 11th biology, we have five units. The first unit is diversity in the living world, which has four chapters. Chapter 1, the living world, biological classification, plant kingdom and animal kingdom. So let us start with unit 1 that is diversity in the living world. So biology is the science of living forms and living processes and since early days man could identify differences between non-living and living organisms and also sin since olden days many scientific research studies started in order to know more about living organisms and these studies led to recognition of similarities amongst living organisms of the same kind that is horizontally as well as living organisms of different kinds that is vertically and also these studies revealed that living organisms are related to each other and also to all organisms that ever lived on earth so even humans realize that they are related to many living organisms as well as they are dependent on many living organisms thus efforts were started to conserve biodiversity so in this chapter we are going to learn about life forms what is the systematic description for identification of these life forms? How do we name these life forms, that is nomenclature? And what is the classification of animals and plants? All these come under one heading, that is taxonomy. In this unit, there is a special mention of Ernst Mayer, who was a German biologist who worked in Harvard University and he is also called the Darwin of 20th century. He was one amongst the 100 greatest scientists of all time. He was awarded three prizes which were widely regarded as triple crown of biology. Those were the Balzan Prize, the International Prize for Biology, the Crawford Prize, all because he pioneered the currently accepted definition of a biological species. So let us start with chapter 1, the living world. So we find around us there is wide range of living types and they live under extraordinary habitats like cold mountains, deciduous forests, oceans, freshwater lakes, deserts, hot springs and we also find there is beauty of nature and living organisms around us which leads us to question what living is as opposed to non-living so let us find out what is living so living organisms show distinctive characteristics and they are growth and development reproduction metabolism ability to sense environment responsiveness to change in environment and self-consciousness. So all living organisms show growth, we all know this. Growth is referred to increase in mass or increase in size of a living organism. We find that in plants this growth continues throughout the lifespan of these plants and this is called as indeterminate growth whereas in animals and humans the growth stops after a particular age and this is called as determinate growth in multicellular organisms growth and reproduction both happen growth happens by increase in number of cells that is multiplication of cells and hence increase in mass Whereas reproduction occurs by increase in number of individuals, producing more individuals of the same kind. 
in unicellular organisms however when the cell divides it refers to grow both growth as well as reproduction so growth and reproduction are synonymous in unicellular organisms in majority of higher plants and animals growth and reproduction are mutually exclusive events in living organisms growth occurs from inside whereas growth or increase in mass is also seen in certain non living things like mountains boulders sand mounds which grow by accumulation of material on their surface and this is called as accretion so this growth occurs from outside one must remember that increase in body mass is considered as growth growth therefore cannot be taken as defining property of living organisms as some non living creatures non living things also show growth from outside coming to reproduction we know we are well aware that non living things are incapable of reproduction or replication by themselves however all living organisms all especially multicellular organisms they show reproduction which is referred to as production of progeny or of springs possessing features more or less similar to those of parents so we see that male and female come together to produce new forms of their own kind so this type of growth reproduction is generally referred to as sexual reproduction but there are certain microorganisms or organisms which also reproduce asexually so we find that fungi generally show reproduction by asexual spore production yeast and hydra show budding from their bodies and this is a kind of reproduction which they show planaria which is a flatworm regenerates itself and produces more new forms fungi filamentous algae protonema of mosses they show fragmentation in the form of reproduction so fragmentation means breaking up unicellular organisms however like amoeba show reproduction which is same as that of growth so reproduction is synonymous to growth in case of unicellular organisms however we find that certain living organisms like mules sterile worker bees infertile human couples do not reproduce or cannot reproduce cannot produce offsprings hence reproduction also cannot be an all inclusive defining characteristic of living organisms next coming to metabolism metabolism consists of large number of chemical reactions which occur inside the cell of a living organism and these chemical reactions may lead to building up of new substance that is called as anabolism in which new complex substances are produced from simpler substances or it may consists of catabolism that is breaking down of complex substances into simpler substances and metabolism is only exhibited by living organisms non living things do not show metabolism sometimes scientists show these chemical reaction in the test tubes outside the body of the living organism and this is called as in vitro chemical reactions whatever happens inside the body of a living organism is in vivo and whatever happens outside the body of the living organism is in vitro so these in vitro chemical reactions are neither living nor non living and hence cannot be considered as metabolism hence cellular organization of the body and metabolism is the defining feature of life forms next coming to consciousness that is to be aware of surroundings so all organisms from the prokaryotes to the most complex eukaryotes can sense 
and respond to environmental stimuli which could be physical, chemical or biological. There is a phenomena called as photoperiod which affects reproduction in seasonal breeders, both plants as well as animals. So what is a photoperiod? It is the time during a 24 hours period of day when all the life forms are exposed to sunlight. And this is known to affect reproduction in seasonal breeders in both plants as well as animals. Thus, ability to sense environment is present in all living forms, but self-consciousness, to be conscious of our own selves, is only present in human beings. Consciousness, therefore, becomes the defining property of all living organisms. So now let us move on to diversity in living world. So what is the meaning of diversity in living world? It is also referred to as biodiversity. Biodiversity means the large variety of various types of living organisms which we see around us. So they may consist of potted plants, insects, birds, pets in our houses, other animals and plants around us. Also, there are certain organisms which we cannot even see with our naked eye, but they do exist around us. We should also remember that whenever we go and explore newer areas, we find new organisms, new plants, new animals in those particular areas. Even in older areas, we find new organisms continuously. So this is referred to as biodiversity or the number and types of organisms present on earth. Each different kind of plant, animal or organism that you see represents a species and so you can see there are so many different types of organisms which may we may not even recognize as So, the number of species that are known and described range between 1.7 to 1.8 million. So, there are millions of plants and animals in the world and it is very difficult to name them locally as well as these local names may vary from place to place even within the country. Hence. This difference in the local names may create confusion when we refer to these particular plants and animals while talking about them with individuals of other states of our own country or individuals coming from some uh, other countries, foreign countries. So hence, there is a need to standardize the naming of living organisms such that a particular organism is known by the same name all around, all over the world. This process is called nomenclature. Nomenclature or naming is only possible when the organism is described correctly. So we need to describe and identify the organism so as to name it and this is called as identification. So in order to prevent confusion while talking about a particular plant or animal with different people, uh, the scientists have established procedures to assign a scientific name to each known organism. This is acceptable to biologists all over the world. For plants, the scientific names are based on agreed principles and criteria which are approved in International Code of for Botanical Nomenclature which is called as ICBN. Similarly, Agreed principles and criteria are used for naming 
animals by animal taxonomists which is given in International Code of Zoological Nomenclature that is ICZN. At the same time, International Codes for Nomenclature of Algae, Fungi have also been evolved as well as nomenclature for bacteria, viruses have also been evolved. So what is the importance of this nomenclature? So the principles or characteristics on which the scientific, scientific names of the known organisms are made are universally accepted by biologists all over the world. So the same principles are used all over the world and these scientific names have also been accepted all over the world by the biologists. The scientific names ensure that each organism has only one name. So there is no confusion amongst the names of the same organism. Description of any organism should enable the people in any part of the world to arrive at the same name. So if people from different countries describe a particular organism, they should point out to the same name. They should be able to recall the same name of this particular organism. Nomenclature also ensures that such a name has not been used for any other known organism. So these are the importances of developing scientific names which are universally accepted all over the world for the living organisms that is plants and animals. So this is Carolus Linnaeus, who has played an important role in nomenclature of living organisms and he suggested a system of providing a name with two components in it which is called as binomial nomenclature. So each scientific name has two components, the generic name that is the name of the gene, genus and the specific epithet or the name of the species. The naming system given by Carolus Linnaeus is being practiced by biologists all over the world as it was found to be very very convenient. Let us take an example of the scientific name of mango. It is written as Mangifera indica. Mangifera here is the name of the genus or and indica is the name of the species or specific epithet. So there are certain universal rules of nomenclature which have been produced and which are followed. So what are these universal rules? Biological names are generally written in Latin. So why only Latin? Latin is mother of all European languages. Though it is a dead language now, but it is uh, all the early botanical literature was written in Latin and its words convey precise meaning. They are easy to comprehend. Hence, the biological names were generally written in Latin and hence the names are written in italics. Both the words in a biological name when they are handwritten are separately underlined. When printed, they are printed in italics and it indicates their Latin origin. The first word denoting the genus starts with a capital letter while the second word denoting the specific epithet starts with a small letter. For example, Mangifera indica. You can see both the words are in italics. You find the first word starts with capital letter that is genus name of the genus and indica starts with small letter name of the author may appear after the specific epithet 
that is at the end of the biological name and is written in abbreviated form or short form. For example, Mangifera indica Lin. It indicates that this species was first described by Linnaeus. So, since it is nearly impossible to study all the living organisms, a system of classification was developed. What is the meaning of classification? It is a process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characters. So, for example, the easily recognized plants or animals like dogs, cats or insects, hence all these dogs, cats, mammals, wheat, rice, plants, animals, etc. are convenient categories we use to study organisms. The scientific term for these categories is taxa. Taxa can indicate, indicate categories at different levels. So we see that plant is also a taxa, wheat which is a plant is also a taxa. Similarly, animals is a taxa, mammals which is a type of animals is a taxa, dogs which are also mammals is also a taxa. Okay, So, a taxa represents categories at different levels. In order to facilitate the study of kinds and diversity of organisms, biologists have evolved certain rules and principles for identification, nomenclature and classification of organisms. Based on characteristics, all living organisms can be classified into different taxa, as we have already seen, into different categories, which represent different levels. The branch of knowledge dealing with these aspects, that is, the aspects of identification, nomenclature and classification of organisms is referred to as taxonomy. This word taxonomy is derived from Greek word which has two components, taxis and nomos. So taxis means arrangement or division, that is classification and nomos meaning method. So method of classification, method of arrangement or division. Thus, taxonomy is a branch of biology that refers to the process of classifying different living species. Characteristics form the basis of modern taxonomic studies and what are the characteristics which are considered under taxonomy for classification? They are external and internal structures of a living organism along with the structure of the cell, development process of the living organism and ecological information of the organism that means the habitats the surroundings in which the living organism lives how this organism reproduces so on and so forth thus characteristics identification classification and nomenclature are the processes that are basic to taxonomy Human beings, human beings have always been interested in knowing more and more about the various kinds of organisms, particularly with reference to their own use. In early days, human beings needed to find sources for their basic needs of food, clothing and shelter. Hence, the earliest classification was based on uses of various organisms. 
human beings were always interested in knowing more about different kinds of organisms and their diversities and the relationships among them. This branch of study also refers to systematics. Systematics also refers to study of evolution of different types of organisms. The word systematics is derived from the Latin word systema which means systematic arrangement of organisms. Linus used Systema Naturae as a title of his publication for referring systematics and Linus also published Species Plantorium in which he described different species, biological species of plants as also he described Systema in 10th edition of Systema Naturae. Systematics later included identification, nomenclature, classification and evolutionary relationships between organisms. Human beings have always human beings have always been interested in knowing more and more about the various kinds of organisms, particularly with reference to their own use. In early days, human beings needed to find sources for their basic needs of food, clothing and shelter. Hence, the earliest classification were based on uses of various organisms. Human beings were interested in knowing more about different kinds of organisms and their diversities and the relationships among them. The branch of study which deals with various organisms, their diversities, the relationships that they share and also the evolutionary relationships is referred to as systematics. The word systematics is derived from the Latin word systema which means systematic arrangement of organisms. Linus used systema naturae as the title of his publication for describing systematics. Linus also published species plantarum in 1753 which included the species of plants and he published Systema Naturae in which he described systematics in 1758. Systematics later included identification, nomenclature, classification and evolutionary relationships between organisms. So let us now see what are the various categories which are used for classification of various organisms that is taxonomic categories. So classification is not a single step process. It involves hierarchy of steps in which each step represents a rank or a category or a taxon which we had already seen. Since the category is a part of overall taxonomic arrangement, it is called taxonomic category. All categories together constitute taxonomic hierarchy. Hierarchy means the various levels of a particular system. For example, in our family, our father, our mother are the highest hierarchy. Our grandfathers, grandmothers are the highest hierarchy. Then our father, our mother, then the siblings, the offsprings of the father and the mother, the siblings, then their siblings and so on and so forth. So the hierarchy means various levels of a particular system. So there is a higher level, there is a lower level and there are middle levels. Each category 
referred to as a unit of classification represents a rank commonly termed as taxon for development of taxonomic categories or classification knowledge of characters of an individual or a group of organisms is required this categorization helps in identifying similarities and dissimilarities among the individuals of the same kind of organisms as well as of the other kinds of organisms so what are the common taxonomic categories so we find the lowest category in the taxonomic hierarchy the lowest rank is the species above which is the genus above the species is the family then comes the order then comes the class then comes the phylum for animals and division for plants so at this level of this taxon there are two categories that is phylum and division and lastly the highest rank or the highest category in the taxonomical hierarchy is kingdom as you see the number of similarities seen among organisms of the various categories we find that the number of similarities amongst organisms of a particular species are more as compared to the number of similarities of a particular kingdom so the number of similarities among organisms go on decreasing as the taxonomic hierarchy becomes higher and higher let us represent the generalization of these taxonomic categories so if we look at the animals and plant around us many of them fall under kingdom so kingdom is a more generalized category amongst living forms it has got large number of plants and animals which we look around us then phylum for animals and division for plants is lesser generalized as compared to kingdom class is further lesser generalized then comes order then comes family then comes genus and then comes species so the most generalized category amongst nature is kingdom and the least generalized category is species so let us see an example kingdom which falls under the domain kingdom animalia which falls under the domain eukarya we find in kingdom animalia all different types of animals then phylum corda cordata under kingdom animalia so kingdom animalia has number of phyla but amongst them one phylum is phylum cordata then class mammalia amongst in phylum chordata so phylum chordata has many classes one of them is class mammalia then comes order carnivora which falls under class mammalia so class mammalia has many orders and one of them is order carnivora then comes family canidae which falls under order carnivora so order carnivora has many families one of them is family canidae then comes genus canis which is one of the genus among amongst family of canidae and lastly species canis lupus lupus canis lupus
which includes wolves and dogs now you can see in this single species there are wolves as well as dogs and they can be further divided into subspecies like one of the subspecies is of domestic dog that is canis lupus familiaris and another subspecies will be of the wolf so this is how the taxonomic categories or taxonomic hierarchy are present so according to the history of biological classification aristotle a greek philosopher classified different animals based on habitat characteristics etc later a swedish botanist carolus linnaeus introduced taxonomic hierarchy categories during the 18th century and this system of classification is followed globally till date so carolus linnaeus was the first tax taxonomist to classify according to taxonomic hierarchy categories taxonomic hierarchy refers to the sequence of categories in increasing or decreasing order as we have just seen in the previous slides kingdom is the highest rank and species is the lowest rank in the hierarchy now let us have a detailed look at taxonomic hierarchy in biological classification so the first or the lowest rank of the taxonomic hierarchy species and ernst meyer is credited with developing the definition for biological species the concept of biological species which says species is a group of or groups of actually or potentially interbreeding natural populations that are reproductively isolated from other such groups so we found while we were studying the different categories taxonomic categories we found that in species wolves and dogs fall under the same species why because wolves and dogs can interbreed amongst themselves naturally wolves and dogs <coughs> so let us see species which is the lowest taxonomic category ernst meyer is credited with developing the biological species concept which defines species as groups of actually or potentially interbreeding natural populations that are reproductively isolated from one another remember it is naturally interbreeding populations now what is the meaning of this for example wolves and dogs we have seen wolves and dogs falling under the same species and then they are divided into subspecies so wolves and dogs can naturally interbreed amongst their populations and produce offspring which have got genetic combinations or genes of their own kind so the genetic pool of wolves and dogs which fall under the same species remains within the species so hence biological species have been described as groups of actually or potentially interbreeding natural populations that are reproductively isolated from such other groups so species is the lowest level of taxonomic hierarchy it refers to a group of individual organisms with fundamental similarities now since we found that they are naturally interbreeding populations and their genes or genetic pools remain within the same species since the genes are same so these genes will express various 
external characteristic features which is called as phenotype which will be similar amongst individuals of the same species so same genes will produce same characteristic features so genotype will produce phenotype species can be further divided into subspecies as we have seen already with wolves and dogs one should be able to distinguish one species from the other closely related species based on the distinct morphological differences one or more specific epithets or species form a genus so a genus consists of one or more species human beings belong to the species sapiens which is grouped in the genus homo so the scientific name for human beings is written as homo sapiens now let us move on to the next higher level of taxonomical hierarchy that is genus genera are aggregates of closely related species genus comprises a group of related species which has more characters in common in comparison to species of other genera so there may be genera which have got only one species called as monotypic genera and there are genera which have more than one species called as polytypic genera so what are the examples of genus potato and brinjal are two different species but both belong to the genus solonum lion that is lion leopard tiger all belong to the genus panthera so their name is written as panthera leo panthera pardus and panthera tigris respectively but this panthera genus differs from another genus felis which includes cats so let us see some examples of genera so solonum is the name of the genus under which fall the species tuberosa that is potato lycopersicum that is tomato and melongina that is brinjal similarly in animals panthera is a genus and the various species are panthera tigris panthera leo and panthera pardus next moving on to the family that is a uh, higher than genus taxonomical hierarchy it has a group of related genera with still less number of similarities as compared to genus and species so the number of similarities goes on decreasing as we move up from species to kingdom families are characterized on the basis of both vegetative and reproductive features of plant species if you observe the features of a cat and a dog you will find some similarities and some dissimilarities as well so they both are separately put into different families cat in felidae and dog in canidae you find both the names that is felidae and canidae have got ae at their ends so this is a characteristic feature of names of family of families so we find a family of plants solanaceae you find ae at the end which has got genera solonum petunia and datura depending upon the characteristics of their flowers also there is a family in animals felidae it has got genera panthera felis and pumas so let us move on to order which is higher to family it is a semblance of families which exhibit a few similar characters so it is a higher category the similar characters are less in number as compared to different genera included in a family 
प्लांट फैमिलीज लाइक ऑन वुलवुलेसी सोलनेसी आर इंक्लूडेड इन द ऑर्डर पॉलीमोनियल्स मेनली बेस्ड ऑन द फ्लोरल कैरेक्टर्स द एनिमल ऑर्डर कार्निवोरा इंक्लूड्स फैमिलीज लाइक फैलीडे एंड कैनिडे सो लेट एस सी अ प्लांट ऑर्डर पॉलीमोनियल्स which includes families like on volvulaceae solanaceae animal order carnivora which includes families like felidae and canidae let us move on to class and this category includes related orders for example class mammalia consists of order primata which is of monkeys gorillas gibbons etc and also it includes order carnivora which includes animals like tigers cats and dogs however mammalia has many more orders so let us see class mammalia which has got got 26 orders but some orders are carnivora and primata remember human beings also fall under primata let us move on to the next taxon next taxonomic hierarchy that is phylum so this taxon has actually got two categories one is phylum for animals and second is division for plants so this taxon which has got two categories phylum and division are also higher categories and we find the various phyla porifera chordata arthropoda for animals based on the common features like presence of notochord and dorsal hollow neural system the most the animals are included in phylum chordata like fishes amphibians reptiles birds along with mammals so the animal kingdom has various phyla like porifera chordata arthropoda let us move on to the highest taxonomic hierarchy that is kingdom it is the highest level of classification and there are five kingdoms of living organisms so first is kingdom animalia or animal kingdom kingdom plantae or plant kingdom next are kingdom fungi kingdom protista and kingdom monera which we will be seeing in detail in the next chapter so we already know the taxonomical categories and their hierarchies so it begins with species as the lowest rank then comes the genus family order class phylum or division and kingdom so as we go higher from species to kingdom the number of common characteristics goes on decreasing lower the taxon lower the taxa more are the characteristics that the members within the taxon share higher the category greater is the difficulty of determining the relationship to other taxa at the same level now let us by heart the taxonomic categories of some organisms like let us start with man the biological name is homo sapiens the genus is homo family is hominidae order is primata class is mammalia and phylum is chordata falls under animal kingdom next is housefly the biological name is musca domestica 
the genus is musca family is muscidae order is diptera class is insecta and phylum is arthropoda again falls in animal kingdom next comes mango the biological name is mangifera indica the genus is mangifera family is anacardiaceae order is sapindales class is dicotyledony phy division not phylum division here is angiospermy next comes wheat the biological name is triticum estivic estivum the biological name is triticum estivum the genus is triticum family is posi order is poles class is monocotyledony and the division is angiospermy both the mango and wheat fall under plant kingdom so we have finished with the taxonomical categories now let us move on to taxonomical aids so what are these taxonomical aids and what is the use of these taxonomical aids so taxonomic studies of various species of plants and animals are useful in agriculture forestry other industry and in general for knowing our bio resources and their diversity millions of plants and animals have been identified and described but a large number still remains unknown also new plants and animals which are described have to be classified and named hence taxonomists have developed a variety of taxonomic aids to facilitate identification naming and classification of organisms so the first aid is called as herbarium herbarium is a storehouse of collected plant specimens that are dried pressed and preserved on sheets these sheets are arranged according to a universally accepted system of classification these specimens along with their descriptions on herbarium sheets become a storehouse or repository for future use the herbarium sheets also carry a label providing information about date and place of collection english local and bot botanical names family collector's name etc herbaria also serve as quick referral systems in taxonomical studies next comes botanical gardens these specialized gardens have collections of living plants for reference plant species in these gardens are grown for identification purposes and each plant is labeled indicating its botanical scientific name and its family the fam famous botanical gardens are at q england in india there is indian botanical garden in howra west bengal and national botanical research institute in lucknow uttar pradesh museums Museums have collections of preserved plants and animal specimens for study and reference. Biological museums are generally set up in educational institutes such as schools and colleges. Specimens are preserved in containers or jars in preservative solutions. Plant and animal specimens may also be preserved as dry specimens. Insects are preserved in insect boxes after collecting, killing and pinning. larger animals like birds and mammals are usually stuffed with preservatives and preserved museums often have collections of skeletons of animals too so museums have a large variety of collections zoological parks these are the places where wild animals are kept in protected environments under human care but in environment as far as possible similar to their natural habitats then comes key 
taxonomical key is another taxonomical aid used for identification of plants and animals based on similarities and dissimilarities so let us see an example of a key so you can see this is very commonly present even in your textbooks in puzzles etc so similar keys are used as taxonomical aids also so you can see there is vertebra a vertebrate with fur yes or no so if it is yes then it is mammals if it is no that then it has feathers so if it has feathers it is birds if it has no feathers then it is further extended so in taxonomical keys we find that these keys are based on similarities and dissimilarities they are based on characteristic characters generally in a pair called couplet and it represents the choice made between two opposite options so a couplet has a contrasting characters and you have to make a choice against two opposite options the result is acceptance of only one and rejection of the other each statement in the key is called lead so each statement with contrasting characters is called lead separate taxonomic keys are required for each taxonomic category such as family genus and species for identification purposes keys are generally analytical in nature so we have to analyze based on the contrasting characters which are given and come to our answer apart from all these taxonomical aids there are some more called as flora manuals monographs and catalogs flora contains the actual account of habitat and distribution of plants of a given area these provide the index to the plant species found in a particular area manuals are useful in providing information for identification of names of species found in an area monographs they contain information of any one taxon as the name mono says it is single mono means single so it contains information on any one taxon catalogs these are books or registers containing the lists arranged in a particular order generally alphabetically of all species found in a particular place or area so this is all for chapter 1 of 11th standard biology that is the living world thanks for watching this video if you feel that you have understood biology from this video please share to your friends this video and also like it and subscribe neat den Oh